Hey guys, Ed here, and I thought it was about time I did another pickup video. I've had stuff piling up here for the past couple months, figured I would take this opportunity to show it off so that I can put it on the shelf or do whatever else it is I'm going to do with it. Now, I've got a couple things that I'm not going to show here. I picked up some really cool board games that I'm not going to show. I picked up a few different laser disc items, and I picked up another Sega Pico. After not finding one for years and years and years, I've found three in the past year, so... Uh, that's sitting over there somewhere, and I'm not going to bother going to get it. I do have one item that is not either a game or game hardware. It is Captain N, the Game Master. Now, I watched this show when I was younger, and I never really thought it was all that good. But sort of looking back on it through rose-colored nostalgia glasses, <laughs> I actually kind of enjoy it. This has got four episodes on it. It's got Kevin in Videoland, Mr. and Mrs. Motherbrain, Video Olympics, and Mega Trouble for Mega Man. I believe that's the first four episodes. But I'm going to sit down and watch this with my kids. I think it should be a little bit of fun. And I've got, uh, well, we'll start out with the game stuff, or the video games now. And I think I'm going to go in revert. Well, maybe not. I'll show this first. I picked up an old PC game, Terra Nova. It says there that it was a buck. I ended up getting it for 50 cents. And it looks like a mech combat game. And I love the older mech combat games. So I figured I'd pick this up. Uh, and play it with my son. He's really been getting into PC games lately, so this one should be fun to play in LAN multiplayer. Now, I'm going to move on to games, and unlike usual, I'm actually going to show the Sega Genesis games first this time, just because, well, hey, I want to be a little bit different. The first one is a game I have about seven copies of, but I bought it, you guessed it, for the case. This was a dollar, and even though I've got probably eight or ten copies of Tommy Lasorda Baseball, I always buy these for a dollar because they are the regular size Genesis cartridge cases, and I can reuse these. Good stuff. Next, I bought a game that I didn't have in the collection. It's not something I normally would have bought. I think this was $2 at Goodwill, or maybe $3. But it's a Mega Drive game. Uh, Winter Olympics, and I don't know if you can see on there. Try and get the light out of the way. It says four play on Sega Genesis and Sega Mega Drive. So I kind of bought it as a curiosity. Also, it's complete, and for three dollars, it's hard to pass up on any complete game. But there you go. And it's actually got two versions of the instruction manual, which is kind of weird. Alright, I picked up a couple of wrestling games. WWF Royal Rumble and WWF Super WrestleMania. I believe somebody has told me that one of these games is really good and the other is crap. I could be mistaken with that memory, though. Either way, I think these were $2.50 each. I didn't already have them. And if I hate them, I can always reuse the cases for a game that I don't hate. Now, this is a game that I'm fairly certain I'm going to like. College Slam on the Genesis. I have this for the Sega Saturn, and I really like it. So I figured, since I don't always hook my Saturn up, my Genesis is always hooked up to one of my televisions, I would get this, and hopefully it'll be as good as the Saturn version. Picked up a copy of Awesome Possum. I have a feeling that Awesome Possum is not actually awesome. I could be mistaken on that as well, so let me, get, let me know if you guys like Awesome Possum. Uh, I'll be trying it out here probably this weekend. Copy of Brutal, Paws of Fury, complete on the Genesis. I think this was $2.50 as well. I've got the 32X version, but I'll be honest with you, it's been a while since I played it, and I don't recall liking it, but maybe I did. Doesn't, doesn't look great. Uh, I got a copy of King's Bounty, complete on the Genesis. I remember this as being an old computer game back then. I didn't actually even realize that they had this out for the Genesis, but turns out they do. Could be interesting. Sort of looks like... Like an RPG strategy crossover game, maybe? I don't know. Might be fun. And this one I do have a copy of, but it's a loose copy that I printed up a cover for. It's Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And I had a lot of people talk about this in the video I picked this up in. Uh, I was doing a series of videos where I did live game hunting footage, but I didn't like doing them because it's kind of a pain about to carry the camera on, and I never seemed to find anything when I was recording. But... Uh, some people said this was terrible. I don't actually think this is that bad. It's got some interesting elements to the game. I, maybe it's just because I like Star Trek. But, yeah. Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Then there was one loose cartridge. Onslaught. And it's because I never see this game. Uh, 
unfortunately, this is one of the ballistic games that comes in like the old style computer game cardboard box. So finding a cover for this online has proven fairly difficult for me. If anybody has a cover, they can email me. Or if you know where I can find a good copy, please don't say the cover project. I've checked all the obvious places and most of the, the not so obvious places. But if you know for sure where you can find one of these, let me know. I'd appreciate it. All right. Is that it for Genesis games? It is indeed. Now, I'll show off here a couple of other games for other systems. I got a copy of Donkey Kong Jr. on the Atari 2600. Surprisingly, I did not have this, but I like the Donkey Kong game, so certainly for a dollar, had to have that. I got, uh, for the PlayStation, two games. These were a dollar apiece. Jumping Flash 2, which looks like it could be an interesting little platformer, and Vanilla Road Rash on the PlayStation. Not 3D Road Rash. This is my preferred way to play Road Rash in two dimensions and on, well actually my favorite version is on the 3DO. I, I'm kind of curious to see how the PlayStation version compares. Finally, because of Lomboy's post-1975, when I saw this copy of R-Type selling at a, uh, yeah, an exchange for about half what it goes for on eBay, I went ahead and bought it. Even though I don't like paying more than a couple dollars for games, this one looked really good. Dave, Lomboys Plus 1975, did a video where he shows off uh, all the versions of R-Type he played as a kid and a couple of others. And when he came across this one for the TurboGrafx-16, it looked really, really good. So when I saw this for what was a pretty reasonable price, I picked it up. Uh, it is pretty cool. Now, hardware items. I'm going to start off with a system. Well, we'll start off with this one. This is a Mattel Intellivision, which I have already complete in box. But, well, actually, I've also got the Sears version that works perfectly fine as well. But the, the one that I already have, the Mattel anyway, it only plays one game. And when I say one game, I don't mean one game as in every copy of that game works in it. Literally, there is one copy of Burger Time that works in the Intellivision that I own. No other version of Burger Time and no other game will work no matter how much I clean it. Very, very weird. I don't understand why that is. This will replace that one, so I will have a complete working Intellivision and then I can pull apart the other one and see if I can figure out what makes that game uniquely able to play on it. And if not, I don't know, I'll sell it as a dedicated Burger Time in television, maybe. It's kind of a curiosity. All right, now I'll move on to this system here. This is an NES that I found at a Goodwill, and I have never, and I mean never, seen a Nintendo Entertainment System at any of the thrift stores around here, let alone for $10. So when I saw this sitting there for $10, I thought, you know what, I want to pick that up. I'm going to buy that, and I'm going to take it home and clean it up, and it'll be wonderful. Then I opened up the door, and there was like some nasty, crusty stuff coming out of the corner here, and it was all over on the inside. And I thought, you know what, there's no way. Not even for 10 bucks am I going to waste money on that. So I left it there. I came back a few days later, and it was still there. So I took that as a sign, and I thought, you know what, I'll buy it. I'll take it home. I'll get it all cleaned up. If it works, wonderful. I'll have what is a pretty clean working NES. If not, I can try to repair the motherboard. If that doesn't work, I can use the case for another project that I, I have plans for. Turns out, when I got it home, and after I spent two hours cleaning the disgusting mess out of this thing, I had to completely disassemble it, soak all the parts except for the boards in hot, soapy water for about 15 minutes before I could even loosen the stuff up enough to scrub it, but it was covering everything in there. I even had to go and scrub the boards with a toothbrush to get the stuff off of the circuit boards. But by the time I was done, and by the time I was done refurbishing the 72-pin connector, this works as good as any front-loading NES I have ever owned. So I guess, great, I have a working NES. I'm not sure what to do with it. Maybe I'll find somebody to give it away to. It came with uh, two NES controllers that were also filthy, and I also had to completely disassemble and clean and an NES zapper. So that is cool. I have working NES after many hours of cleaning and repairing. Uh, then I found, I think this was $3 at an exchange, a, another dog bone NES controller. I now have two to go with my top loader. I had one before that I stole from my little brother Jim. This one I found and purchased, and I gotta say, 
I love the way these things feel. I mean, I grew up playing on one of these, and they feel pretty good, but this thing, the contours fit so well, and they just feel like they're constructed better. They feel like they're made out of better material. So if you see one of these and you think, ah, I like the original, they really are pretty good. You should try it out. So that's it. I believe that's all I've got to show you today. I hope it didn't last too long. 10 minute video. Eh, it's not so bad. Um, yeah, I guess what I can tell you is I've been working on the game room still. I uh, got my projector all set up, got the surround sound set up. Uh, probably going to be doing a room tour here in the not too distant future. And I've been working on a whole bunch of other stuff that eventually, hopefully someday will make it onto YouTube. Uh, just recorded a video with my little brother last night for my other channel, uh, Lame Ass Gamecast, and you will hopefully start to see content going on there in the next few months, and then we should have regular content after that. So look for that. And to those of you that came out to our stream, my brothers, my son and I, of Borderlands on Twitch, thank you very much. That was a good time. Uh, a few people from YouTube showed up. A few other people showed up and subscribed to our Twitch channel that I, I'm not sure who they are. And we had a good time answering questions and playing video games. So hopefully we can do a few more of those in the future, too. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys later. I mean, check it out. Can you tell that I'm scratching my scrotum right now? You don't know. Thank, thank God, no. You don't know. Okay, maybe now I... Oh, there we go. I don't know, but I think that's going to be the intro right there. <laughs>